What's in an Urgle? Do you see beauty within this horde of repugnance? Or is there another strange magnetism drawing you to the Death Guard? I'm your narrator Benji, and this is The Grim Dark. Now, having already set off from the wilderness in cultivating two disparate combat patrol armies, we aim today to go one step further and bring our elite all-rounder and poxwalker builds up to 50 power 1000 points, aka an incursion army. And we invite you, as seems appropriate, to join us. If you've stumbled upon this video without having seen part 1, be sure to check that out, because although we will be showing a complete summary of each list, we'll only be discussing any new or changed units from the previous builds throughout the course of this video. Either way, we are, as a matter of record, forging two different paths throughout this adventure. One that focuses exclusively on crafting an all-rounders army, with a slight emphasis on the more elite units available in the Codex, and the other centering around the swarm that are Poxwalkers, cramming as many Nurgle Zombies in and units that complement them as absolutely possible. So with the waffle out the way, let's crack on with the Poxwalker build first. Remember, we brought Typhus as our sole HQ choice with his inbuilt synergy with the Walkers. But despite the still relatively low cost breakpoint we're talking about today, we are going to shoehorn in a second HQ, namely a Malignant Playcaster. The reasons for this are fairly clear. Detachment building restrictions within the Codex only allow you to take one Lord of the Death Guard per detachment. And so, it was either this, or a boring old handsomish looking Chaos Sorcerer. There is just no point spending CP and finagling a second detachment. And it's always a bit of fun bringing a Psyker to the party, so here we are. And his innate ability to dole out mortal wounds when he manifests psychic powers is cherry on the contagious top. One quick side note though, you do currently have to buy this with two other models, a Noxious Blightbringer and a Plague Marine Champion, as part of the Chosen of Mortarion box. And whilst these are probably worth your while picking up, you can alternatively just grab a Sorcerer Lord in Terminator armour and have a heavier wallet at the end of it. And so here we arrive at the meat and decayed flesh of the build, where you ask, how many Poxwalkers are we taking, Benji? Well, I have some sad news, because in between videos, G-Dub decided to amend the power totals of the Pox, and so whilst it's more uniform, 3 power for a unit of 10, and 6 power for a unit of 20, it does mean we can only afford to upgrade one of the units of 10 to a motley crew of 20. Let's hope this is the last change they make and leave us in peace. We break ground next and discover a new battlefield role, the elite choice. And today's lucky winner is the Tallyman, a lonesome little fella that gives a great deal of love to core units. And seeing as we have to rock a lot of Astartes core in order to bring the pox, we are not a sad panda that this guy can confer upon one lucky core unit per turn, plus one to their attack rolls. Not only that, you get the gift of the command point each turn if you roll a 7 up on 2d6. Ah, Nurgle, you 7 loving little bugger. And now a not so controversial choice, one unit of 4 chaos spawn. Why controversial you ask? Well, because they're not unanimously considered great, and coming in boxes of two, they ain't particularly cheap either. But A, they're cheap as chips in game terms, and B, why would you sniff a 7 inch move, 4 wounds apiece, and a bunch of potent attacks when they get to their destination? And their bespoke stratagem, grandfatherly influence, is also worth a punt pumping up to 6 toughness, but also giving them disgustingly resilient. Taking 1 damage less each time they're wounded is nothing to sniff at. 
And the only problem is the stratagem doesn't like four models, as it costs one CP for up to three models and two CP for four to five model units. We then round out the additions with a unit we've already seen in the other build, a Myphitic Blight Hauler. Another fast attack choice and a jack of all trades. Competent in moving around the table, spreading high strength gunfire and even proving he's no slouch in close combat either, should he be forced into such a situation. And so there you have your 50 power on the nose, but uh, ooh, what can I spend the rest on 922 points? Well, the rest should at least, in the spirit of the build, be filled with an extra 10 pox walkers. But that would require another purchase, as we've exhausted the 30 that came with the combat patrol box. There are, of course, plenty of other ways to spend 78 points. More plague marines, upgraded weaponry, etc, etc. Either way, we have a build I think we can be proud of. A ton of wounds, some actual mobility, not bad for Death Guard, and yeah, uh, loads of zombies. Segwaying swiftly to the best of the best build, we only have a few additions to discuss, and none of which can be found in the HQ slot. We're sticking with our Lord of Virulence as our Warlord, but we are adding to our troop choices with an uber imaginative duplicate unit of five Plague Marines. Well, because Plague Marines are good, and they're durable, and they're very quite good as well. Here they come to save the day. Took the red pill today. We then move to a unit of iconic eliteness. A unit of five Blight Lord Terminators that are better Terminators than your average bear. Rocking the expected five toughness, but also an improved four up save over their Adeptes Astartes cousins. And alongside their disgusting resilience, plague weaponry, and overall package, they are very difficult to take down, and can pepper spray from medium range, but really do most of their work in close combat. Plus, like most Termi units, they have a fairly flexible suite of available war gear upgrades for every five models in the unit. And so as advertised, we arrive at our last pick of the day. A heavy support choice, Plague Burst Crawler. A superbly statted and durable is its middle name tank. Rocking no less than four weapons at the uber efficient strength five and strength eight breakpoints. This can do effective damage against basically anything your opponent might be fielding. And takes on a great deal of incoming firepower with its 12 wounds and three up regular, five up invuln save. This is everything you would want from your heavy support. And that's your lot. The best of the best are certainly boasting a lot less in the way of model count. 29 models to the Poxwalkers, expected majority of 48. But at 50 power on the button and 960 points, they are no less in overall quality. And at this point, you realise if you hadn't already that this build is, amongst other things, for those of you that don't like to see your paintbrush as much as the next guy. But still, each and every unit packs a potent punch for its cost, and will hold its own against nigh on anything. In terms of what it's going to cost you all in, it's also clear that once we step outside of the value for money confines of the combat patrol box, that things are not cheap when expanding on a Death Guard army. As you can see, the Poxwalker build is striding way ahead of the Elite Force in terms of cost, and that's not just because of the higher model count. This time round we opted for the Malignant Playcaster that comes in a collection of three and the Chaos Spawns that don't give you many points for your buck. But if you want theme, sometimes you gotta pay for it. I must say though, I'm quite pleased with how these two armies are diverging on their separate paths, and it'll be cool to see what's next for both of them. We have however come to the end of chapter 2 of this here tale. Stay tuned for the next parts that will see us planning and building up to 100 power 2000 point strike force armies all the way up to 150 power 3000 point onslaught sized forces. 
for now, I leave you with food for thought and information to digest. My name has been Benji and this video is over. <laughs>